Hello there, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you the IM3 Chapter 4 Quiz 4 Extra Practice on Unit Circle Trigonometry. On this problem, we're converting from degrees to radians. So for this one, uh, we have to multiply by pi over 180 degrees. So that'll make the degrees cancel out. And then we just have to reduce 570 over 180. So these are both divisible by 30. 570 is almost 600, which would be 20 if you divided it by 30. Um, so that's going to be 19 then. We'll have 19 over 6, so negative 19 pi over 6 when all is said and done. For this problem, we're trying to convert negative 5 pi over 3 into degrees. So we're going to multiply by pi over 180. And then if we do 180 divided by 3, that's going to be 60 times negative 5 is going to be negative 300, and then the pi's are canceling, so we end up with negative 300 degrees. For this problem, we're trying to convert this into radians, so we'll multiply by pi over 180 degrees, and then we just need to reduce this. Uh, now, these are both divisible by 15. If you do the math, this is going to end up being negative 11 pi over 12. On this problem, we're trying to convert this into degrees, so I'll multiply this by 180 degrees over pi. 180 divided by 6 is going to be 30. 30 times 13 is 390, and then the pi's cancel, so this is 390 degrees. On this one, we're trying to convert this into radians, so I'll multiply it by pi over 180 degrees. Now, 315 and 180, those are both reducible by 45. That's the biggest number that goes into both of those. So 315 divided by 45 would be 7. 45 goes 4 times into 180, so this is 7 pi over 4 radians. On this problem, to convert this into degrees, we have to multiply by 180 over pi. So the pi's are going to cancel. 180 over 9 is going to be 20. 20 times 17 is going to be 340 degrees. On this problem, we're trying to figure out the reference angle for this. I'm going to start by converting it into degrees. So multiplying this by, let's see here, we're going to have 180 over pi. 180 divided by 12 is 15. And 15 times 17, well, let me think here. 15 times 15 is 225 plus another 30 would be uh, 255. So this is negative 255 degrees. So to get a reference angle out of this, let me make it a positive angle first. So add 360. That's going to give me, let's see here, 105. And now I just have to find the, uh, subtract this from the closest x-axis angle. This is closest to 180, so 180 minus 105 is going to give us a reference angle of 75 degrees. To convert this to a reference angle, let's first convert it to degrees. So if I multiply this by 180 over pi, uh, that's going to cancel out the pi's and 180 over 18 is 10. 10 times 31 is going to be 310, so this is negative 310 degrees. Adding 360 to that to get a positive angle gives me the angle 50 degrees. And 50 degrees, it's already between 0 and 90, so it's already a reference angle. This already tells us the angle between the angle and the, uh, the x-axis, so we're done. To get a reference angle on this one, I first want to have a positive angle, so I'm going to keep adding 360 degrees until I get one. Now, I'm going to have to add 360 twice, so let me just go ahead and do that. That's three, uh, let's see, 720 that I have to add here. That's going to give me 30, and 30 is already a reference angle because it's between 0 and 90. To get the reference angle on this problem, let me first convert this to degrees, multiplying this by 180 over pi. 180 divided by 3 is 60, times 5 is going to be 300, and the pi's cancel, so this is going to be 300 degrees. And now, how far away is that from the closest x-axis angle? Well, the closest angle is going to be 360. So 360 minus 300 is going to give us a reference angle of 60 degrees. To get the reference angle on this one, I need to uh, figure out how far it is from the closest x-axis angle. The closest angle is going to be 180. So I'm going to do 210 minus 180 to get a positive angle out of that. And that's going to give me a reference angle of 30 degrees. To get the reference angle for this one, I'm going to first add 360 to get a positive angle. That'll give me the positive angle 240. And now I just have to figure out how far this is from the closest x-axis angle. That would be 180. 
So 240 minus 180 is going to give me my reference angle of 60 degrees. On this problem, we're trying to figure out the sine of 330. Let's start by getting a reference angle. So this is 30 degrees from 360, the closest x-axis angle. And sine, which is the y values, is going to be negative down in quadrant 4. Uh, so this is going to be negative sine of 30 degrees. Sine of 30 is 1 half, so then this will be negative 1 half. To find the sine of negative pi over 2, one optional step you could do is turn this into degrees. This is really negative 90 degrees. Or you could think of this as positive 270 degrees if you add 360. Either way, we're talking about the sine at the bottom of the unit circle, the y value down there, which is going to be negative 1. For this problem, we're trying to get the cotan of 30 degrees. I'm going to express this with sine and cosine. This is really cosine of 30 over sine of 30. Cosine of 30 is radical 3 over 2. Sine of 30 is 1 over 2. So if we put all that together, we can cancel out these over 2s, these denominators of 2. And that just leaves us with radical 3 over 1, which is just radical 3. To figure out the cosine of 315, let's express this with a reference angle. 315 is 45 degrees from the x-axis, from the 360 line. So that's our reference angle. Cosine, which is the x values, is going to be positive in quadrant 4 because we're to the right of the y axis. So this is really just positive cosine of 45, which we know is one of those special values. That's going to be radical 2 over 2. To figure out cosine of negative 5 pi over 6, let's first convert this into degrees. 180 divided by 6 is going to be 30 times negative 5 is negative 150 degrees. And then let's add 360 to get a positive angle out of this. So that's really cosine of 210. At this point, now that I kind of know where I am on the unit circle, I'm going to convert this to a reference angle. So we are 30 degrees from the 180 line, the x-axis. And cosine in quadrant 3 is going to be negative because we are to the left of the y-axis. And cosine represents x values. So then this is going to be negative cosine of 30 degrees. Cosine of 30 by itself is radical 3 over 2, so this is negative root 3 over 2. On this one, we're trying to figure out tan of pi over 6. As degrees, this is really just tan of 30 degrees. We're going to turn this into sine and cosine to make it a little easier to decipher here. So this is really sine of 30 over cosine of 30. Sine of 30 is 1 half. Cosine of 30 is radical 3 over 2. So if we cancel out these divided by 2's, these denominators of 2, this is really 1 over root 3. And if we multiply by root 3 over itself to get rid of that radical down there, this is going to be root 3 over 3. To figure out tan of 135, let's write this with a reference angle. So 135 is 45 degrees away from the x-axis angle of 180. So that's our reference angle, 45 degrees. Tangent in quadrant 2 has a negative value because our slope in quadrant 2 is negative. So this means we can rewrite this as negative tan of 45 degrees. Now tan of 45, that's one of those special values I told you to memorize. Uh, tan of 45 is just 1. That'll save you a ton of work if you memorize that. So this is the, going to then be negative 1. On this problem, we're trying to get cosecant of negative pi over 3. I'm going to turn this into degrees just to have a better sense of what I'm looking at. This is really, let's see, 180 divided by 3, that's negative 60 degrees. And now I'm going to write this as a reference angle. Um, normally I would make this a positive angle first, but I know negative 60 degrees is just 60 degrees down from the x-axis in quadrant 4. So we have a reference angle of 60. Since we're in quadrant 4, below the x-axis, that means that cosecant, just like sine, of which it's the reciprocal, um, stands for the y value of the angle, just like sine, cosecant's going to be negative down in quadrant 4. So this is negative cosecant of 60 degrees when all is said and done. I'm going to rewrite this now as negative 1 over sine of 60. Sine of 60 is going to be radical 3 over 2, so we have negative 1 over all that. Same change flip, we've got negative 2 over radical 3. And then rationalizing my denominator here, uh, multiplying by root 3 over itself, I'm going to end up with negative 2 radical 3 over 3. To figure out cosecant of 150, let me get a reference angle. 150 is 30 degrees away from the 180 line. 
And since we're above the x-axis and cosecant's related to sine, which is the y value of the angle, uh, that means we're going to be positive up there for sine and cosecant. So this is going to be positive cosecant of 30 degrees. Let me rewrite this as 1 over sine of 30 degrees. Sine of 30 is 1 half, so this is 1 over 1 half, which same change flip is going to give us 2. For this problem, we're trying to figure out secant of 90. Well, that's really 1 over cosine of 90. And this is a quadrantal angle, so there's no point in trying to get a reference angle out of this. You just kind of have to know where you are on the unit circle. Um, now, 90 degrees, that's the top of the unit circle. Cosine is talking about the x value up there. That's an x value of 0 at the top, because you're on the y-axis. So this is really 1 over 0, which we know is undefined. For this problem, we want sine of 7 pi over 6. Let me convert this to degrees before I do anything else. 180 divided by 6 is 30, times 7 is 210 degrees, so sine of that. And then let me get a reference angle here. 210 is 30 degrees away from 180, the closest x-axis angle. And since we're below the x-axis here in quadrant 3, uh, sine, the y value of the angle, that's going to be negative down there. So this is going to be negative sine of 30 when we rewrite this with a reference angle. Sine of 30 by itself is 1 half, so this then is going to be negative 1 half. On this problem, I'm trying to get cotan of pi over 4, which is cotan of 45 degrees. So I'll, let me rewrite this as cosine and sine. This is cosine of 45 over sine of 45. Now the interesting thing is that cosine and sine of 45 are both radical 2 over 2. So I'm basically doing something over itself here, which we know is going to be 1.